and uh, also if you find or if you are an organization that's not on there then you can always ask to be added so um, I'll check that out for everyone great thanks Josie um yeah if there's time at the end we can have a look at it or maybe next time um that sounds great I think the recording has uh, worked itself out and has begun now so I will quickly introduce the meeting so welcome everyone to this fortnightly session frontline staff um we've got three people hopefully presenting today um and yeah up first is monica from the money and pension service so i'm going to hand over to monica so yeah please take it away and thanks very much for coming along that's okay thanks for inviting me uh, my name is monica court i work for an organization called money and pension service um and i'm here to talk to you today about our free tools and resources and also um one free program that we have which i think will be of interest to yourselves can i just check can you see my slides yeah we can right. yeah right thank you so um this is money helper it's our consumer facing platform it is backed by the government and we have lots of free tools and, and information it's all um, guidance uh, on, in regards to money and pension so I call it from cradle to death information so apologies if that latter word upsets anybody but we've got some uh, really useful content um, that you can either signpost your users to or you can actually have a number of the tools placed on your various consumer facing um, websites uh, whether it's your customer website or even on your staff intranets as well um, it's a it's one point where you can get lots of uh, free guidance and tools and we've also got a lot of tools around the debt advice as well we are the biggest funders of free qualified debt advice in England as well so just in terms of some of the tools that you may find of use is we have got a budget planner um, this tool is a great tool because it's quite detailed um, it asks a series of questions, but it does cover every aspect of expenditure, including mm -hmm. things like school uniforms. Um, and the great thing with our tools as well is you can actually have them syndicated. So you could take the budget planner, for example, have it placed on your uh, customer facing website and then your customers can use this tool. And the great thing with the budget planner tool is once they have completed it, it can, they can actually save it into their personal drive and it turns into a spreadsheet. The other tools we've got, we've um, We've actually, our benefits calculator, we've now included within it um, some more around that whole income maximization piece. So one of my colleagues um, went through the calculator with um, an employee who is working part-time and is on um, receiving disabled benefits. And through using this calculator was actually able to claim another 150 pounds a month in addition to what he was already claiming. Um, so it is a great tool. And just in terms of benefits, just to make you aware, there is 15 billion pounds of unclaimed benefits out there at the moment. Um, other tools that we have, we have our workplace pensions calculator tool, we've got a savings calculator tool, and I appreciate in this current climate for a lot of people that is very difficult. Um, for those of you that may be working with people that have got homes and, you know, it's coming up to things like the mortgages and we got some news today about the fact that it is still staying at 5.25%, but we've got a mortgage calculator as well for those that are potentially going to be having to now look at an increase in their mortgages. We also have things like a baby cost calculator as well. So some great tools that you can actually access and use or signpost your very service users to these tools. Because of the cost of living and what's been going on for the last sort of 16 to 18 months now, uh, we've got lots of really useful content around energy bills as well um, and household bills in general. Um, we've created a tool called the Bill Prioritizer tool. So you can access this tool, choose the bills that you know a person is struggling with at the moment. Um, and then it will provide you with some guidance about what you can do about that, the organizations that you can um, seek further advice and support and help from as well. This is actually what the Bill Prioritizer tool looks like if anybody wanted to access it and use it. We've also got some cost of living booklets. Um, again, I will share these slides afterwards, but if you see the link there, you can actually download these. These have been flying off the uh, shelf since cost of living kicked in. 
um, and um, a lot of people have been actually saying uh, we've been getting some really positive feedback about these guides as well. Other guides we've created as well are things around um, living on a squeezed income, talking to your creditor. Sadly, research is showing us that people are maxing out on their credit um, and are sadly turning to loan sharks and don't understand the impact of loan sharks and what that actually means. So we've got some really useful content about talking to your creditor, having the confidence to talk to them um, and understanding as well the creditor's role because I think a lot of people think that they're just out there to get them, um, you know, and to give them a bad credit history or a bad credit file, which isn't actually the case. We're also seeing a trend um, where people are um, either reducing their pension contribution or stopping their pension contribution. So again, some really useful guides and content around those sorts of things as well. We also have free posters that you can download and put into places where you may have residents coming into to promote money help at the site. And it has a QR code on the posters. So all they need to do is scan that into the phones and they'll be taken immediately, immediately into our money helper platform as well. We've also done a lot of work with um, uh, the uh, National Academy for Social Prescribing and also we have created a money and mental health toolkit for practitioners working with people that have mental health issues. Um, and again, this has been extremely popular and if you want this, this is again free to download. Um, you just need to email us and let us know how many you would actually need. We have a contact centre as well, which is open Monday to Friday with a free phone number. We also have a WhatsApp channel that has actually been one of our more popular channels because, again, people talking about money, they're very anxious. Um, so this is a great way of starting the conversation and then going back to the conversation as and when need be and not repeating yourself. And we also have a web chat. We've also got a lot of free guidance around pensions as well. We've got a great guidance team that you can book an appointment with them and get between 45 minutes uh, to an hour's guidance. Uh, and we also have web chat. Um, there was a great push back in September of this year by the government because a lot of people don't understand pension credit and what that actually means. So again, you can get your service users to book an appointment if they don't understand things around pensions and in particular that pension credit piece. And we've actually enhanced our information around pension credit on our Money Helper website as well. Um, the other thing that I finally wanted to talk to yourselves about is um, we have got an online de debt referral um, program. Hackney Council is actually already a referral partner on this. So for those teams, um, you have already got this and can access this. Um, it's primarily for those people who are not the most vulnerable, so therefore don't need that face-to-face -face support, but can have a telephone conversation. Um, and what it is, is you have a, access to a referral form, you complete the referral form, and at the back end, we have a range of qualified money advisors. Sadly, there's a lot of scams going on at the moment where individuals are setting themselves up as debt advisors and either taking uh, money off people and giving them either ill advice or no advice. We are the biggest funders of free qualified debt advice in England. Nobody needs to or should be paying for debt advice. So what will happen with that referral form is you complete it, it immediately gets sent off into this virtual contact centre and your resident will have a choice of either getting an immediate call back there and then or a call back at a time that suits them within two days of that referral form being sent through. The great thing about you being a referral partner with us as well is you will then be given access to weekly reports. So it will give you some information as to whether or not that customer has actually engaged with um, the debt advice organization and a lot of our stakeholders that are engaged with this program are actually finding that really useful because then it helps to continue those conversations because we know that residents it takes residents a while to keep kind of engaging with us and engaging especially around the debt advice piece in particular for those on this call that 
might be interested in becoming a referral partner then please do email me because again this is a free program we are not here to replace organizations that provide debt advice we are just here to support capacity at the moment um, so if you already have um, partners in place um, that's great, all well and good. Um, but if you would like this as an additional thing in terms of capacity, then please do let us know. And because you are already partners, if your teams want to find out more about this, we can come along and deliver some uh, training to your teams just to make them familiar with the process and everything for you guys to then use. Um, and these are the organizations that we fund. So we fund National Deadline, uh, Debt Free Advice, Citizens Advice, uh, Money Wellness, Debt Advice Foundation. We also fund outside of London, uh, Greater Merseyside, and also the Emma Partnership, which is the East Midlands Money Advice as well. Um, and these are just examples of organizations that have actually signed up to this program. So as you can see, it's quite diverse. It isn't just housing organizations. We've got councils. We've actually got a number of water companies now that have come to us well as well. And EE has signed up to this program as well. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm going to stop sharing if I may. Just go back in. Does anybody have any questions at all? Uh, thanks, Monica. I think Lorraine, yeah, Lorraine, you're first. Yeah, hi, Monica. Um, thank you for that presentation. It's really helpful. Um, I was going to ask, is there a criteria for um, for any of our clients or the clients that we work with at Turning Point, uh, kind of like substance misuse, uh, mental health? So is there like a criteria that they have to fall under or is it just they can access uh, the debt support? Because there has been no. questions around debt support. No, um, they can no, access okay. the, the debt support. And the other thing as well is um, if they're working with um, health practitioners, for example, there's also, sorry, there's some, uh, yeah, there's also um, breathing space. I don't know if you're aware of breathing space, but it is basically getting into an agreement with a debt advisor. And that individual is then given 90 days where no creditors can contact them. And they have to work with that debt advisor around um, looking at a some form of repayment plan, if that's possible. And there is one that's been created for those that have got mental health issues as well. Oh, that's amazing, because um, I think like debt right now, uh, coming up to Christmas and everything like that, there's, there's a lot of worry around debts and stuff. So if they can have like 90 days uh, breathing space, that, that's fantastic. Yes, so, and, yeah. and the debt advisor, they just need to ask the debt advisor about breathing space, because it would be the okay. debt advisor that would engage with them around that and get that process going. Um, uh, but if they have got mental health issues, they have to be um, referred in by a mental health practitioner for okay. breathing space in uh, yeah that's what they need to do that's the criteria for that okay. but in the norm if they haven't got mental health issues they can yeah. access breathing space anyway through their okay. yeah ah, okay that's interesting is is it possible do you have like a leaflet or an e-leaflet that i that with with all that information on it so i could like, yeah you find on. um yeah, yeah could um lorraine i may not have your details contact details um John, could you share them yeah. with me afterwards? Is that all right? Yeah, and what, what I can do as well, is, as usual, is um, if you send me your slides, Monica, and any other information that you're happy to go out in the newsletter, I can include it in there. Okay. Um, and everyone on this call will get it as well as everyone else on the mailing list. Um, um, so, yeah, but I, I'll send you um, Lorraine's email as well. Uh, before I go to you, Josie, um, there's a few comments in the chat as well. So there's a couple um just wanting your email address i think monica if you're able to put that in the chat yeah, so sure. melody and tracy were after that um to get the information and also melanie wants to be able to sign up as a referral partner yeah um, great news great um i'm just, I'm just looking at the comments in the chat um batio has been yeah has mentioned about um their service users are digitally excluded so obviously quite a lot of those tools are you know online based so um but there's a phone number isn't there so yeah well how do you kind of how do you kind of work with people who aren't maybe um 
don't use sort of the internet and, and aren't too tech savvy, I guess? That, that's a really good question. Um, unfortunately, it is all digital, I'm afraid. We are in uh, discussions internally about looking at how we ensure that all our information is um, is more inclusive. So the things like the booklets and that, you can actually order the guides um, and so forth um, and get hard copies of various guides. But unfortunately, the tools are online. Um, and I'm really sorry about that. No, that's okay. It's, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's something which lots of lots of organisations. Um, it's a challenge that yeah, lots of people, lots of people have engaging with with residents who who um, sort of are digitally excluded. Um, Bash has asked, are they? Is there an easy read version? Um, there are on some, not on all. I'm going to be very honest, and we're still working through that. Oh, great! Thanks, Monica. Um, Josie, your hand is not up anymore, so I'm assuming your question was answered. Um, so, Jocelyn, I think you're next. Yeah, hello. Um, thank you for that opportunity. And we offer service at uh, Chatworth, Youth, uh, Chatworth Road, and we provide support service. And most of the things that you mentioned, are challenging for us where to send people to and how to help them on that so i'll be very happy if you can get contacts so that we can uh, follow up and get your information to provide our uh, support our service users fine so i've put my email details in the chat um yes please so, yeah so if you just um contact me drop me an email and then yeah we can look at ways of supporting um your service users yes please thank you so much okay Thanks, John. No worries, thanks, Joyce Lynn. Um, does anyone else have any other questions for Monica? No? Okay. Oh, Josie. Yeah, sorry, I, I was going to ask, are Hackney a referral partner already, Hackney Council? Yes. We are. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so, so just... And, and again, I'll be very honest, and it, this happens in all organisations, um, especially big organisations like councils, you know, um, various teams have signed up, other teams are not aware of it, and that's fine, because then what we can do is come along, um, you know, do some training. Again, the training's all free. It takes about 40 minutes, 45 minutes online. Uh, and then you've also got training videos and materials to support teams who can't make the training. Um, and then we just go through how to complete the referral form. We'll then give you the access to the link um, for you then to use. Um, and then whoever decides to be the key holder for those weekly reports, um, you just need to let us know and then we can start distributing those out as well. Okay, because uh, I'm sure I haven't had any training. I, I wasn't aware of you, so I'll see if I can get a bit more awareness and maybe get you along to do some training with us. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. I'll just okay. I'll go through doing you an email. All right. <laughs> Cheers. Great. Thanks, JC. Um, <laughs> any, other, any other questions? And the other thing, just to make yourselves aware of, this is all government backed. We're not here to sell anything in. It's all free. Um, so please access the information and just for yourselves as well, for those of you that have got pensions, um, you know, a lot of uh, people are very unclear about their pension pots, what, what's the value, what's going on. Research also shows that 44% of women don't actually open up their annual pension statement. So again, for yourselves, access our team. They're a great team. You can find out what your numbers are looking like uh, in terms of the value of your pension pots. You can demystify that jargon that is used in pensions, terminology as I call it. Um, but again, please do use our services. Amazing. Thank you, Monica. Thanks so much for coming along. That was fantastic. And uh, yeah, glad you've uh, been able to make some connections with people on the call as well. Um, Sorry. Brilliant. Um, thank yeah. you, and thank you for inviting me. I have to go no, now. I'm really sorry. Yeah, All right. No, have a good right. meeting. Yeah. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Um, fantastic. So we are going to move on to the next presentation. So we've got John and Ben who've come along from uh, Sheffield and Hull universities, and um, are going to talk a bit about um, some work that they're doing with uh, our the team that I'm in um, around measuring the impacts of, of 
uh, some of this work. But just before I hand over, I'm going to pass on to Rachel, who's just going to give a bit of a context for that work. So um, take it away, Rachel. Thanks, John. And just to say that what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to evaluate the impact of our work. But one of the things that it's quite hard to evaluate, it's often quite hard to measure the kind of support that people give, because what you're giving is actually preventing people. So how do you actually prevent, um, how, you know, how, how do you how do you demonstrate that you've prevented somebody from falling into crisis? How do you demonstrate that you've actually prevented something from happening? If something happens, you can prove you can you can demonstrate that you've actually sorted it out. But if something hasn't happened, how can you how can you uh, demonstrate that it that it, it you know if you hadn't have done anything, it would have um, you know it something worse would have happened. And so therefore, you know, because we're very keen to try and encourage the council and other statutory agencies to understand and, you know, let's, let's face it, give funding to uh, preventative services and not just focus all the time on, you know, dealing with crisis. We want to move people away from crisis support, you know, dealing with people when they're in, in, in crisis to actually, you know, developing um, approaches that are based on, uh you know prevention so that are based on supporting people's networks whether they be personal networks helping people to make friends uh you know helping people to get the networks so you know getting getting to know their neighbors so they they can get people to help them out if they're in a bit of a problem you know repairing relationships maybe with people's families to moving on to sort of community networks like providing and getting people access to advice when they need it support community services pro community provisions like you know meals for older people stuff that the council won't provide and then then you've got the sort of statutory services like housing and we want to, to you know develop those kind of networks that shield people and so um but obviously to to demonstrate that we we're helping people, we, you know, we often find it, you know, hard to collect case studies from organisations. So what we've done is we've developed um, a, uh, a template or, a, you know, and I've just shared the document in the chat. And it's the idea is that this will be a sort of, we'll get this onto a spreadsheet and it'll be, you just go, click through a series of drop down menus. And so this will, will enable this case study sort of collection tool to, you know in it you you'll be able to go through it really quickly but what it does unlike a lot of case studies that you might have come across it asks you to tell us what not just the support you're able to give but also the support you weren't able to give so we can be clearer about what's missing and what needs to be put in place um and also um uh, it, yes, it, it asks you to kind of think about what is the sort of issue that the person, so a bit about the characteristics of the person, but also to think a bit more deeply about, okay, they presented with this issue, but what was the underlying issue and what was the cause of that underlying issue and what were you able to resolve and what weren't you able to resolve? So I'll just, um, I'll hand over really to um, John from the University of Sheffield and Ben I probably said everything you wanted to say, but I'll, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, yeah, thank you for inviting me along. Um, and as Rachel said, we, we're really keen to do some work with you guys. We think there's some really interesting stuff going on in Hackney. Um, just to give you a bit of background, I thought what I'd do is sort of set up what, what why are we from Sheffield and whole universities interested in Hackney? What, what the hell are we doing looking at somewhere so far away from where we are? Um, so, so to give you an idea of, of where we come from, uh, I'm part of a team of researchers and Ben's part of that team of researchers as well. Um, and we work across Holland, Sheffield universities. And for the last, oh, which must be about 15 years now, we've focused a lot of work around trying to understand why things work better when people collaborate, when voluntary sectors and local authorities and communities come together, trying to show that actually the outcomes are always better when you work together, when you trust each other, you share the load and you learn to work together properly. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time and we know it works. You guys probably know it works. But as Rachel said, the problem is always, how do you convince those who aren't 
in that space and who who are in control of budgets and who are in control of rapidly declining budgets i think it's fair to say that actually things like prevention place-based working collaboration really do make a difference so that's that's the sort of area we've been working in and we did a large project during covid where we looked at community responses and how they were mobilized looked at a lot of mutual aid organizations um, especially working close to you guys in Islington. We did a lot of work in Islington during COVID. Um, and what really came out was that everybody's under pressure doing what they're doing. And that is the priority, and it should be. But then after you've done it all, you're then sitting there being told, well, how do you prove that you you achieved anything? And and suddenly when the budget's re, re analyzed and everything else comes back, they go, well, what did you achieve? And it's that point of saying, well, what what can we use to evidence it and and nine times out of ten what you've got in terms of an evidence base to evidence what you've done is not probably going to be good enough so as as academics we we've, we we come at things from a slightly different angle we don't come at things of where we sit in an ivory tower and tell you what we think we should do and then show you it what we do is we work with places and we say what are you trying to do and how can we use the things we understand and the tools we can develop to help you better evidence what you do so we we twisted the system around a bit and and that's the focus of, of where we work um at the moment we've been doing a number of projects on prevention models uh, we've just finished or just coming to the end of a two-year project with um national institute for health and care research on a study of local area coordination as a preventative model working in four locations across the country and we're also working on with a number of local authorities on their poverty prevention strategies during the cost of living crisis and again trying to work in real time helping them to understand when they're collecting dashboard data or core information data how do they design that most effectively to be able to evidence that what they're doing is really making a difference because at the end of the day that's what we want is that when we've got limited resources how do we make sure that that's making the biggest impact we can make and we can evidence that to those people who are funding it so so that's our, our, our space if you like that's where we're working um and what we're really keen to do is is to try and bring a number of the sort of toolkits and, and systems that we applied in other locations to help you guys in hackney to try and capture some of this this evidence base and, and the logic behind what we're trying to do is we're trying to move away from some of the models that traditionally have been applied which are very much the sort of policymakers dream of, of a, a theory of change where you say what is the problem what is the action and how do we prove the action made a difference to the problem um, challenge with the sorts of things as Rachel said is that people's lives aren't that straightforward this sort of data tends to put people in neat little boxes where you, you, everybody with the same problem is the same their lives are the same and so the same action will lead to the same outcome and the world doesn't work that way so what we've tried to do is develop a way of looking at it using our experience of working with the other teams that says we need to start from how we understand individuals and the lives that they're leading and the challenges that they have in those lives and how certain things can trigger those those lives into crisis points or more challenging experiences where they need more support where they need more help and if we can start to get a better picture of those experiences those life patterns and that what those triggers are we can start to understand better what can we do through community through helping individuals through the actual local authority system that can build the capacity of those people to respond and better cope with some of those triggers so that when those triggers happen again life doesn't stop you know life continues to be challenging just because we've solved it once doesn't mean we'll solve it forever when those things come back again how can we evidence that the support we put in place allows people to actually cope better than they were coping before with those challenges? So how do we balance those, those experiences? Um, and the reason we've come along to the meeting today is because, we, as I said, we've been working with Rachel and the team to try and suggest a few bits of work that we'd like you to, to engage with. Um, and I know the first thing that most people will be thinking of, oh God, they're gonna make us do more work we're up to our eyes, we're full to capacity, and all he's asking for is more. Um, what we're trying to do is find that space, which is how do we do something that is good enough that makes the evidence work, 
but is not a massive drain on people's capacity. We recognize that these things are difficult and we've worked with a number of local authorities trying to pilot out some of these to, to ease off some of the real problems. But there are certain things that, that we, we can offer to help you with and support you with, and we're putting resource in to help you to sort of try and develop these. At this stage, it is, as Rachel said, you know, there, there is a document there for you to have a look at one part of it. It's it's for us to try it out. We're not saying this is the absolute perfect version and that this is the only version you could apply. But what we're saying is from our experience and from what, talking to the team, this is where we think we should be heading, but we'd like you to have a look. Also, we know that it might not work first time round. So we'd very much like you to, to sort of have a go with it and take it at face value and, and try it out and tell us why it doesn't work or what could be better. To give you an example, we've, we've as I said, we've worked somewhere else to develop this and they had a much more simplistic version where they had to fill out lots of open-ended questions. But in doing that, we were able to analyze that and create something that, especially Ben's done a lot of work on this, to create, understanding what the key answers always were, to create something that's much more drop down, much more quick. Um, you guys have added a few more <laughs> broad ranging questions, shall we say, that has made it slightly more complicated. But again, we can try and work on that. So there are, th there are three things that we're, we're hoping to do. Uh, one is to work with the data teams to look at what you already collect. And in particular, to look at can we use the existing data to really understand people's journeys in the system? How do they come in? Where do they get support? What difference does that support make? How do we know? That if we refer them on to summit they actually move on to that system can we keep a track of individuals as they go through the support mechanism the more we can understand what that journey is the better chance we've got of really showing impact secondly we really want to understand how the collaboration across the system works so if you're referring into an old part of the organization if you're collaborating with another part of the information if you're passing somebody on from one to another how can we evidence that that is capturing people's experience and it's helping people's experience how do we understand how those people are getting the support that is preventing other things from happening so exactly what Rachel was saying earlier so what we're trying to do with the, the little case study model is to say can we have a go at piloting this to so we can start to build up a set of examples which show when people come in not just what was the presenting issue but trying to understand what is the context within which that person has, has presented this issue? What are the other things that you think might be happening? And also not just to understand what you did that you could pass on in your role, but also what were the things that you really think would help them that you couldn't help with? So we can build up a much better picture of where the connections are. So it is, a, as I said, it's a test, it's a, it's a challenge. The third area we're gonna be working with, and again, we would really appreciate any help from all of you who might have people who might be able to participate in this part of the work is we need to really get an understanding of the people who are going through these experiences in order to set this up correctly so we want to try and do some participant journey interviews so to sit down with people who are facing quite challenging experiences around poverty and the cost of living and talk with them about what that journey looks like what is the experience they're having how has the help supported them what difference has it made and by putting it in the context of that broader life, we get a much better picture and we can start to build up an understanding of what are those contexts that are leading people into that space? What are those triggers that might push them to need more support? And then what are the sorts of things that might help them to be able to respond to those triggers better? How can we prevent them from, we call it bouncing back. So if they bounce back into the system, they bounce back with less support needed than they did the previous time because they've got more resilience and more support whether through the community through the voluntary sector through the local authority often actually knowing how to navigate the system is often one of the big ones so if we can start to build up that picture we can start to pull these bits together and we hope that by doing that we will work with you guys to get a much clearer evidence base for that you can take forward moving on through other prevention strategies into exactly how you show that what you're doing is preventing people from falling into crisis. A very quick summary. Ben, did I miss anything that you wanted to add? Uh, just a couple of things, if that's okay. Yeah, um, so it's a thing to sort of emphasize, and Rachel and John sort of pushed around this, but at no point are we, are we like 
evaluating anyone's performance in any of this. This isn't us coming in and trying to see, oh, are you doing things right? Are you doing things wrong? Nothing like that whatsoever. We, we're looking at the system as a whole and how it sort of operates in that sense. So at no point are we putting any pressure on you guys in that sense. So so in that sort of case study where it sort of asked about what were the issues and why couldn't you support people, please don't brush over things. Tell us exactly the issues that were happening. What What is it within your team? Maybe it's budget restrictions. Maybe it's a lack of communication within certain systems, anything like that. It's all important to know. Um, and uh, just another thing on the case study as well. So it still needs a little fine tuning because it's been adapted from one that we know works with other local authorities. So if anybody's got anything that they think is particularly vital that's not included, then let me know because the thing is we don't want to make it too much work so we're trying we're trying to reduce it to make it like a three to four minute long job that's it so how do we get everything we need we know how to get what we need out of it but we need to make sure that you guys are the experts who are in the field doing the work make sure that you know what needs to go into it for us to get what we need what to come out of it um and just just a quick thing on the interviews as well like how john was saying we'd be, we'd be looking to take some people to interview but um if you feel that there's people in there who can't deal in all um in, in like formal situations or anything like that that's not how the interviews go the interviews are more relaxed more friendly quite like more chat based um and if you're worried that maybe you've got some people who won't be suitable for male interviewers there will be female interviewers as well so if you've got any issues or concerns about those things before deciding whether or not to pass people on uh, then talk to us about those concerns and we can either alleviate them or tell you that actually we can't deal with that and i think that's what i've got to say john more about the methods than anything else that's my thing brilliant thanks ben ben always remembers the nitty-gritty i i'm always bouncing around with the big ideas and he comes in with the solid this is what we need so that that's us in a nutshell we really hope that we can encourage you to to have a go with it you know we're not saying every single person who comes in you know we use it if you could just have a go within teams of doing a couple here and there feedback to us whether it whether you felt it worked whether it didn't the more we can get the better it gets and as ben said we can then look at what the pattern is and then design something that really does fit to what's going on in your space that then you could just take forward and you can download materials and data and it, it hopefully will really add to the the content of understanding what your impact is in what you're doing did we cover everything rachel that you wanted us to cover uh, yes and i don't know if anybody's got i had a look at the document and uh if you've got any comments it is quite long now i know okay i'm 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 <laughs> i've just doing a bit of um uh sort of work on it now but um yeah i yeah it's difficult i mean yeah maybe i wanted to spell it but it's too long <laughs> yeah yeah for uh, it, it's hard to feel it by it was <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, i mean obviously you know if we're gonna we, we'll put it into a drop down menu which will make it easier but um but yeah it is and maybe you and i need to meet in early new year ben and um go through it and um see because i know you're off aren't you from tomorrow but um perhaps we need to have a meeting early new year to work on it but please do give us comments i know it's long but in terms of you know what you think we're trying to do with it whether you think it's a good thing you know yeah can i just respond to some of the questions or comments in the chat yeah go for it yeah um so so yeah it looks a bit of a mess as, like that because it's originally put together on google form and then moved downloaded so it looks a bit unuser friendly in that instance but the idea is is that everything will be click boxes apart from some spaces where you can offer some extra additional context to things so don't worry about it not looking user friendly in that instance there and for the amount of people to fill it in um it, it, we're not asking you to do it for every single client that comes through the door but if you but if each team can handle like five to ten over a certain period repeatedly maybe like every two weeks or something like that then what that allows us to do is over time build up a large data set so it's not necessarily important for you to go every single client you're dealing with then fill this in because we know you don't have the time we know you've got other pressures and having to deal with all the extra things going on so we're not asking for 
the impossible. Right, thank Ben and John. Um, yes, yeah, so like that, um, that's a really good uh, point, Ben. I think I, I need to stick this on a Google form because um, we do use Google, so I can I can put it into a Google form, which might actually make it easier to to edit it a bit and put down more drop down menus instead of just um, all these kind of like you know sort of uh, text boxes and stuff. Thanks. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, th I think if we could put it on a Google form, then people will have a better picture of what, you know, they're actually being being asked to do, um, if and when it goes sort of live. Um, but um, I'm wondering if you want me to send the send something out in the newsletter, obviously, that goes to a much, much larger list than is on this particular call. But yeah, happy to put it out in the cost of living newsletter as well. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll do that, John. I'll put I'll put it onto a Google form and yeah. I'll give you the link and you can you can add it. Yes. Perfect. Um, thanks, John and Ben, for coming along. It's, it's yeah, it's a really interesting piece of work and um, yeah, the, the lots of the people who join this this call every fortnight are you know doing this doing the sort of work that you've been talking about. So hopefully, um, we'll get some really rich feedback and case studies. Um, Batia, did you want to come in? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I tend in meetings to put things in the chat. Yeah. Um, I'm I really quite concerned to make sure that if you're doing things like Google Forms, that you keep your drop down menus very, very short. Um, I am myself disabled and I struggle with the Google Forms if the drop down menu is too long because I can't then find the right option and choose it and then the form times out or it get, goes to the next page before I finished and then I can't review what I've done because Google Forms won't let me go forwards and backwards. Seriously, I appreciate it's a good mechanism but you have to pay attention to keeping the form itself um, user friendly. And, and the other things I put in the chat about the amount of work I do with Hackney Council's letters. I've sat on so many co-production groups and so many meetings where they've said, we will simplify the letter. So the first page of the letter tells you, and then the next bit is all the legal stuff and everything we have to say. It hasn't happened. And I think, Rachel, you've been aware of the work that I've done with Hackney Council on co-production groups. Why can't you make the first page of the letter clearly state what you want to tell somebody? I spend hours translating things. I don't have that time. I'd rather do impact forms for you than have to spend an hour every time one person gets a letter. And we can definitely feed that back. I think there is uh, has been some work done now around simplifying letters in relation to um, council tax benefits. And they actually, no, not council tax, um, pension credit. I think it was council tax reduction. And they actually found, believe it or not, surprise, surprise, uh, that uh, when they issued a more simple letter, people actually uh, applied for the uh, reduction than when they issued their standard letter. So I think the message is getting across. Um, I guess the sometimes the challenge is that the letters are generated by software programs that we buy into. But I think you're right. There's no, there shouldn't be an excuse for not using plain English and actually putting the salient information up front and leaving the perhaps appendicizing some of the more legalistic stuff. John, can I just answer the, the other point about the drop downs? Um, I agree entirely, and we've tried desperately to make them as concise and tight as possible. And some have got extended a little bit in the conversations with everything that people want to have included in them. The other part of the idea with the, the testing out with some of these is that we're, we're open to people submitting case studies in other formats and, and ways as long as it covers the themes that we've got in there if you want to audio record it and send it over to us and say right here's a couple of example cases but i i don't want to fill it in through that process or you think there's a better way of us doing it that's great because we'll try and in incorporate it into it or we can 
take what you do and we'll get the research team will add it into the process because for now it, the key is to try and capture the data as much as it is the way in which we capture it so that we can start to really build something that is designed specifically for the sort of work you're doing in Hackney. Great, thanks, John. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or, or feedback? Um, just yeah, just to emphasise, this is this is um, you know in draft form, so this is the this is the right moment really to to give any feedback for this work. Um, so yeah, feel free to come in, anyone. Yeah, can I just say, just adding on yeah. to what John said, I think I think it, as long as as long as it follows the structure of that so even if it is like john said better like narrating something and sending an audio file like responding to those things in that order then then anything like that is absolutely fine it's just when people are answering questions that aren't in there or rewording things because if you reword something then there's always the issue that it gets understood differently so it's about making sure that it sort of sticks to a format but as long as that format can be audio um written out in a different way anything like that if that's easier for people like download it and just have your own little way of filling it in if 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 that works better but yeah and like john said it's about learning what's the best most effective way to do this and how do we get this information and then we can then turn it into the longer term um longer term structure of it great thanks ben um I will pass. Um, I, I'll be able to. I'll email you the uh, the list of the questions, Batia, so you can um, so you can do it that way. Um, great. Uh, has anyone else got any other questions? No. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks, John and Ben and Rachel for that. Uh, and maybe once we've when, once we've got a sort of more final version, you can come back to this meeting and and present it then. Uh, that'll be really good okay cool um we were gonna have a third presentation from maya but um she uh, had another meeting at five so there wasn't really enough time but um she'll be able to present next time uh i'm gonna end the recording and then we'll open the floor up in case anyone's got any questions <laughs>